Hey guys, today I thought I would do a quick video about mechanical keyboards and programmability. Now, mechanical keyboards come with all sorts of different switches. This one is a green switch. It's a Cooler Master QFR with Cherry MX Greens. This board has no programmability. And what that means is the keys are what they are. This key in the top left corner here, it's an escape key. That's all it does is it's an escape key. It might sound really cool when you press it, but all that it ever does is escape. Okay, that's different to a programmable keyboard, which is like a Poker 2. So let's just move this out of the way for a sec and grab here my Poker 2. Now I know that the Poker 2 has just been updated with the Poker 3, but you can still understand what the Poker 2 is when I say that this is a dual layer programmable keyboard. Okay, so if you press this key in the top left corner, of course you get escape. But there's a second layer that's accessible that you can see that's printed under the size of the keycap here, and those are accessible with the function layer. All right, so if I do, say, function 6, it's actually F6. Not hard to get. But then there's a programmable layer. To show you the programmable layer, I'm just going to plug it in using this really awesome USB cable that I made myself. Okay, so I've plugged it in, and I'm just going to, on my computer over here, open up a notepad. And the way you access this is with function control. Now I'm going to press the key that I want to use to program. I'm going to press escape. That makes that light go solid. And I'm going to write a little sentence. Uh, let's say I run write uh, head for the hills. You know what? I went over the character limit. Head for the hills is 18 characters, so it's too long for the Poker 2's 14 character limit. So let's do it again. I'm going to do function, control, and I'm going to press escape again, and this time I'm going to punch in a, a shorter one. Uh, let's see. Quick, run, run. Now I press PN to lock it in, and now it's ready to accept another command. So I'm just going to press function control to turn off the programmability, and I'm just going to smash the key a couple times. And of course, I'm pressing it as escape, but if I press it as PN escape, then it outputs my string of text. Now this has a couple of different uses. You know, you might want to program something in that you use frequently, say, uh, your name. Uh, you could, uh, you know, uh, PNP for Pete. Or you might want to put in a password. Let's say your password is bazooka. You could get P PNB to be bazooka. That's kind of neat, but really it has a bit of a limited functionality in that if you've locked something in here, like a really difficult to remember password, and you don't have this keyboard working, you could have lost your, your password. So I don't know about the usefulness of it. If it had more characters, then it would be more useful. And I understand that the Poker 3 does. I believe that it has 32 character limit, which is much more useful. So that's the dual layer programmability of the Poker 2 and of the very similar Poker 3. Let's just unplug this for a sec. I'm going to pop that one over there. Now I'm going to show you a fully programmable keyboard. This is my JD40. Now this one was made by Margo Mods. It's designed by a fellow named JD Carpe, or at least that's his username. And one of the features of this thing is it has a teensy inside of it. I don't know if you can quite see that. There's the teensy there. Now what a teensy allows you to do is a teensy is a fully programmable Atmel controller, which turns this essentially into a keyboard. When I plug it in via USB, again using that awesome USB cable I made, now my computer recognizes it 
as a keyboard, but that's only because that's what the Teensy is telling it to do. Again, sorry, I said it was an Atmel controller. This uses the Atmega 32U4, which is an 8-bit microcontroller using AVR. And there's a fella out there who's developed a really cool program for it. He goes by the name Metallicaz. And don't forget, uh, all of this information will be in the About section below. And he's created a program called Easy AVR USB Firmware and Key Mapper. Which has, I mean, how catchy and cool a name is that? If you're going to name something, you might as well call it the Easy AVR USB Keyboard Firmware and Key Mapper. Because it's super catchy and memorable. Okay, anyways, there's a link to that on screen. But now, unlike before, I have full access to all the layers of programmability through this program. So tell you what, I'm going to jump onto the computer and I'm going to show you a couple of different things that this can do. So this is a Python-based program, so I'm just going to do python main.py. Okay, so here I am inside Easy AVR USB Keyboard Firmware Key Mapper. Again, love the catchy name. I'm just going to go over to File and choose New Default Layout. And you can see here, amongst the available keyboard types, are the JD40, which is what I'm going to be programming. There's also one here called the Quickfire Rapid Frosty Flake, and I'll talk more about that later. But for now, I'm just going to choose the JD40. And Look, right away, it's already set out a default key map for me. But as we've been playing with the escape key, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click the escape key, and I can change that to anything that I want. Let's say that I wanted to change that to, say, another G key. Well, that's not hard to do. In fact, this keyboard is quite easy to program. I can just actually use my Mac keyboard and say I wanted to change that to a 9. I can just go ahead and smack that key and it'll put it in the right place. So you can see there's any number of things that I can put in there. But if I wanted to instead put in a macro, you can see the macros down here. So let's say I wanted to change this to be my favorite URL. So let's have it type this out. Now that macro is saved as M1, so what I can do is just go here and change this to scan code M1. Now when I press the escape key, it'll punch out this sequence. Even cooler than that, I can add different commands to it, like this. Now, before entering this data, it will put down the shift key before punching all this out. Programmability gives you an infinite extensibility. So this little keyboard has just gone from being a limited number of keys to an infinite number of functions that I can run on my keyboard. And for somebody who might be learning about programming, this is a really simple way of starting out, of figuring complex things out, and remembering short little key codes. Now, as you can see, the JD40 does only have 40 keys on it, so it is quite small and definitely what I would call economical. But the programmability goes far beyond this macro and default layer through all of these different layers. Now, by pressing different combinations of keys, I can access different layers of the keyboard. So for example, here on the default layer, by pressing this key, I hit the function layer. Let's say instead I want to change tab to be my second function, function two. Now, when I press what was the tab key, it will now push me to layer 2. In layer 2, I'm going to get this to still be the function key, rather function 2. 
But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the arrow keys here. I don't even need to do it that way. I can just do it on my Mac. Now, when I press my tab key, or what might have been my caps lock key, instead, that'll open up my ability to use arrows. Let's say on function two, I'd like to add another key, say over here. I'd like to change this to be, it could be anything. This could be, well, this could be anything. This could be, say, the mute button. While I was able to mute my screen, it didn't pick up that that was the mute button. So let me just find mute in the tab here. There's mute. So now holding function two, I can mute. This could be volume up. Well, I'm sure you're getting a picture for it, the infinite extensibility. Sorry, that's just off screen, but volume increases now there. This keyboard and this setup with Metallica's Easy AVR USB Keyboard Firmware Key Mapper allows the keyboard to do anything you want it to do. We were just looking at layer two. There's layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six, layer seven, layer eight, layer nine. And of course the default and function layers. Plus with the inclusion of all these macros, there's just so many different things that you can do. Let's go back to the keyboard. So even though the JD40 is much smaller than a normal keyboard, it's got open functionality, so I can assign a complex repeating pattern to the function keys and layers and really open it up. This can be my function key, or this can be my function key, or this can be my function key, or this can be my function key. Heck, this could be a function key if I wanted it to be. Anything I want to do on this keyboard, I can program myself. And that's why, even though it's only got 40 keys on it, I find it a very useful keyboard. In fact, I find it more useful than the other two that I showed earlier. In a subsequent video, I'm gonna do kind of something that I sort of said I wasn't able to do, but I will be able to do. Wow, what an intro. In a subsequent video, I'm going to show you how you can add programmability to this guy. Remember we showed this at the start? Now this is just an off-the-shelf Cooler Master Quickfire Rapid. But from a user named Bepiphany, you can get something called a Frosty Flake, which is a microcontroller, which fits in under here. Now there's a bit of soldering involved, and like I say, I'm gonna do a video about it, but that will allow me to take this keyboard and add the functionality that I have in this keyboard to it. And with all these extra keys and all the different things that I can do, I'm really excited about that. I think that this is gonna make this keyboard the best that I've got. Well, until I get a, a fully programmable 60%. But whatever, you get the idea. I got a lot of keyboards and I love keyboards. This has green switches, this has clear switches, this one also has clear switches. I think I prefer the clear switches, really, if I have my choice. Anyway, you should subscribe to my videos so you can watch an upcoming version with this in it, that should be on screen now, or if it hasn't come out yet, you should definitely subscribe because then you'll be there when it actually does come out. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask them in the comment section below. If you found this video particularly useful, you can buy me a coffee in the About section. Don't forget to check out my other mechanical keyboard videos and my other Raspberry Pi geekery. You're sure to enjoy that. Lots of cool videos, lots of cool stuff coming up. Thanks again for watching and to the incredible mechanical keyboard community for not just helping me discover these different things, but also for designing and making these. Margo Mods, uh, sorry, Margo Baggins, the fellow behind Margo Mods who actually assembled this keyboard, has put together a little video. I'll put that link on screen now. It's worth a watch, you know, you just get to watch a time lapse of the guy putting it together. I'd love to put together my own keyboard sometime in the future, but really, it means something when you get. I'm Margot Mods, and uh, I'm pretty happy to have that one. Like I say, at the moment, it's pretty much my favorite keyboard. Lots of cool stuff that it can do that the others can't. Thanks again for watching.